which is the Holy Ghost, and there is the he, which is the unclean spirit. That's right. See, there's two he's trying to live in one house. That's right. But understand this. If you are, when it comes to God, God styles us as a marriage. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. He calls the church the bride of Christ. Yes. And when he marries the bride, amen, then he says with marriage, it is one man and one woman in holy. That means the thing got to be clean. That's right. It got to be sanctified in what? One marriage. Amen. So you got one man, one woman, and what? Holy what? Matrimony. Matrimony. Amen. So when it comes to God, God tries to teach us even through the analogy of marriage, it can't be two men in the one house. That's right. I can't have two men. Two men, yeah, man is bad English. Two men and what? One out. Y'all talk to me, man. Amen. Now, does, because now if a man is married and you come home and you're married and you find another man in your house with your wife, that's a problem. That's right. You want to know what's going on and they better not be in the bedroom. Jesus. Huh? Because now they have entered into an intimate quarters that is only uh, reserved for the authorized parties. That's right. The authorized parties is the husband and the wife. Jesus. Nobody else. I understand. So in the contemporary society, people have casual living where they have menage a trois and they have more than one person talking about we have an alternative lifestyle. But when it comes to the word of God, there is no alternative lifestyle. The Bible said, come ye out from among them and what? Be ye separated, separated from the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And then I will what? Receive you unto myself. So the book says that he says, and, and, and uh, Matthew says, I will return unto my house. The enemy wants to have authority over you. Jesus. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen, apostle. And I come to teach now because I want you to understand. You will have to decide whether you are all in with God. Amen. Or you want to hold on because God said none but the righteous. Yes, sir. Blessed are the pure in heart. Yes, sir. Got to break this thing. That burden got to be lifted and that yoke got to be destroyed. Yes. Because God is coming back, people. And we got to be ready. And we got to be holy. And we got to be righteous. We ain't just going into heaven any kind of way now. That's right. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. Do I have a church in here? Do I have people that want to go back with the Lord? Oh, Do yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you just get saved because you were scared? Oh, hallelujah. See, even if you get scared, you might still need to be delivered, but deliverance don't take all your life. That's right, Apostle. You gotta decide. I am all in. I don't want the world no longer. That's right. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, all the things of the world, the Bible said that the love of the Father is not in him. And how can you say, dwell the love of God in your heart? And God said, because you love the world. In other words, you love another man. Jesus. The world, you love something else more than you love me. He said, you are not even to love your own flesh. You got to first deny. That's right. Deny yourself. yourself. You got to take up your cross and follow me. He said, and if you don't do this, you can't be my disciple. You want to access the grace of God. You want to access the gift of God. You want to access the anointing of God. You want the blessings. My God, if you ask me about blessings, people want the blessings of God. Amen. But are you willing to totally turn your life over to the Lord? And you say, Lord, why is it seem like? See, this is why you don't have deliverance in your praise and in your worship and your life is up and down spiritually. There's no deliverance. Development. You're not going from glory to glory and faith to faith. Jesus. Because see, in the whole church, we would get down to the altar. And then my mother, I remember, they said, call on the name of Jesus. That's right. We'd be down there, we tired, our throat hurting. They say, drink some water. Call him. That's right. Like your life on fire. Call him. Like it's your last time. Call him. Y'all ain't going to talk. That's right. Me. That's right, Apostle. But in the time that we in, we have people with itching hands. They rather lie than the truth. They want somebody to soothe them, amen, into their sin, amen, into their lascivious lifestyle. But when it comes to God, he said, be ye holy. First Peter 5, for I am holy, said the Lord. Amen. And if we're going to be like the Lord, we got to be holy. And the Bible said we got to be holy in all manner of conversation. That means all areas of our life. God wants to be the head and the ruler of all areas of our life. That 
that mean our house ain't off limit. That's right. Our room's not off limit. That's the right. The internet ain't off limit. Our TVs ain't off limit. Our phones ain't off limit. God said, if you're going to be my wife, Glory to God. you're going to be my bride. I'm going to be your head. And if I'm going to be your head, he grew the word ish means, amen, my husband. Amen. And so he says, I'm going to take care of you. That's right. I'll provide for you. Amen. But there's some stipulations to this covenant. That's right. You can't be cheating on me. That's right. You can't be in one day and out the next. But see, my house, mm -hmm. it was never his house. That's right. It was never his house. Amen. Now, the Bible does not refer to man as a spirit. It says man has a spirit. Man is tripartite, body, soul, and spirit. But man is not a spirit. You have God is a spirit. And they that worship him must what? Worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Amen. And then it lets us know that the devil or Satan or Lucifer is a spirit. It lets us know that the fallen angels, who names are now called demons, that manifest themselves in all kind of ways, amen, they are called unclean or unpure spirits. So then you got to ask yourself a question. God calls us to be clean. So he says, when the unclean spirit is going out of the man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. What's the purpose of that spirit? It wants to lay up somewhere. It wants to rest because there's been no rest since the time it's been kicked out. That's right. So since the time the Lord kicked them out of heaven with the devil, Satan, and three-fourths of the star, those demons been looking and lurking for a place to rest, whether it's a person or an animal, because they are illegal if they try to operate outside of a body. Remember when the unclean spirit was in the man and this and they, and they cried out for Jesus and they asked us to say, allow us to be able to go into the swine. And then Jesus cast that spirit out, commanded go into the swine. And when it went into the swine, the swine ran down to the water and choked themselves. Even the animal did not want an unclean spirit. That's right, Apostle. So there's possession and there's oppression. Oppression of an unclean spirit is to get you to try to influence you to be disobedient and do things opposite of the word of God, though you have the spirit of the Lord. That's right. So you can have the spirit of the Lord. You can come to church, you can sing, you can dance, you can whoop, you can cry, but then here comes that spirit and it comes to try to influence you to do things that is not holy, not righteous, not sanctified, not in line with what God teaches. That's right. And then you say, where does this thought come from? Where does this influence come from? And sometimes the enemy will work through people, try to influence you to go some places, do some stuff, watch some things, take company with certain people. You know the Bible says you're not able to take company with fornicators? That's what the Bible says. You know people sleeping around, don't even live right. The Bible says don't even have heart with them. That's the Bible. Now, see, this is, a, this is, this is God's word. And he said, when you know the truth, you walk that in. My God, I'm preaching this truth. My Lord, I'm preaching this truth. Yes. I'm going to preach this truth. Yes. I'm going to preach this truth. You hear me, devil? I'm going to preach this truth. Amen. I want the devil to know I'm going to preach this truth. Because see, I told you, the Lord told me, said, when you preach this word down, there's going to be in a, a, you know, a little tank. He said, but you preach this word, and I'm going to give you great victory. I said, okay, Lord, thank you. Because see, when the word come, the word come to free. That's right. The word come to deliver. The word come to set free. He said, I sent my word and I healed them. The word come to bring forth manifestation of God's glory, that God can get the glory and God can get the honor. It is only the enemy that don't want truth to come because he, so, he knows that when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. It's a process. You'll become free. And then what? You won't have no attitude no more. You won't get upset with the truth when the truth comes. The that's Bible right. Says, they that love the truth. Anytime you find yourself getting upset when the truth comes, you know that's an influence of an unclean spirit. That's right. That is the influence of the enemy because the Holy Ghost ain't going to make you upset over truth. That's right. The Holy Ghost is the truth. That's right.